actually because I think it's when each part dovetails in. I was very fortunate that I did my three year cert ed and although I had matriculated, even though I hadn't come in with yeah. fabulous qualifications, I had matriculated to do the, to stay on for a fourth year mm. to do science and education at Chester College if I wanted mm. to do it. Actually, I was very foolish. No, I wasn't foolish. I wanted to get, I wanted to get into the classroom. I wanted to get married, which was mm. a big mistake. Um, but then I had to. I found out I had to wait five years before Liverpool would let me do an in-service degree. Goodness. So, Cluid, um, Catrevely would have me much sooner than that, which was why I went there. But uh, the, the thing for me was that I was very fortunate that I, because I did my in-service degree yeah. at Catrevely, alongside my teaching and my work at Chester College, what I was reading was totally dovetailing in to what I was teaching. Mm. So, theory and practice were... Yeah, and if you'd have done it too early you wouldn't have had that experience no. to hand the theory on to. Absolutely. I would have got my degree, like my friend did. Um, she stayed on, did biology mm. um, degree, so she went with, she went down to Devon and has spent the last number of years, yeah. all of them, in the same school yes, in, in yeah. Tavistock, mm. teaching science mm. and doing nothing else. Mm. Which is interesting. Right. But then maybe that's, th that's just different personalities, make oh, different absolutely. choices, and different li life. It, it, maybe uh, you, you go to one spot and it's the, exactly the, uh, the right thing for, uh, for you. For some teachers, it's, they may have done 20 years teaching, but it's the same year 20 times over, absolutely. and they've learned nothing from it. But from what you're telling uh, me, you're clearly learning is central to your professional absolutely. development and the identity. Of being a teacher. Absolutely, and that I think is the ideal situation. Mm. So, although it was hard work, I got my son at home, I was doing part time teaching in the, mm. in the college, part time teaching in school, doing my, my part time degree, yeah. weekends, Friday nights, and Saturday. Oh, right. Um, but it was, it, you know, it was really powerful stuff. Right. Powerful stuff. Uh, some people have an incredible energy, and I, I, I admire that. I wish I had more. Yeah. So, uh, I think that really, for me, I'm now working mainly on Teach First program, yeah. and I think the Teach First program is absolutely amazing, the best thing I've ever done. Goodness. For me, it hits all the right um, buttons. Do you know much about the Teach First program? A little bit. These people, um, it's growing. It's expanding a little yeah. bit, but basically they are uh, well qualified youngsters. Not they're not not a lot of mature, although there are a few who might have been in in work for a few years yeah. in their career yeah. changes. But these people come in um, really rigorous selection, but they come in with a vision, mm. and they come in and they do um, a certain amount of six weeks of intensive training. Yes. Four weeks here, two weeks um, at the National yeah. Institute. And that stuff is carefully planned and tailored to give them what they need. Mm. But in September, they go into their schools, the majority of them anyway. They have their own classes. They, they're not sitting with someone else. They, they haven't got a co-teacher, although some of them do. Mm. And that it doesn't work out. Well, for some people. But they've got this vision for their class. They, they know it's going to be hard work. Mm. They've got a mindset of, well, I don't know everything, but I'm going to learn it as I go along. Uh, they go in, 1st of September, into their class. They've got total responsibility mm. for 60% of the time. And they're supported in that. Mm. But the children see them as their teacher. Mm. And I think that's got a lot to, lot to commend it. But coupled with that, they have assignments, because they do their PGCE alongside their yeah. training, they've got carefully um, managed, carefully managed, carefully designed assignments mm. that they do at particular times through the year. So they did an assignment a little while ago on behaviour management. Mm. Initially they did one on the context of their school in its um, 
local environment in its community. Um, at the moment, they're critiquing a scheme of work that they've been involved with, mm. and they have to think about learning theories and see how their learning theory, how the learning theories have influenced the scheme of work. Well, actually, from, for many of them, they're teaching the scheme of work, and then they're reading about the learning theories, and then they're reflecting on it. Mm. But the point is, that's dovetailed together, so that they're facing these problems. They're learning about the theories. They're mm thinking, did this go well? They're reflecting. Yeah. It, it mirrors uh, some of the ideas behind problem, you know, the, 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 the stuff about problem-based learning. But it, instead of artificial problems, these are real problems that absolutely. they're dealing with. Absolutely. Mm. Amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I think um, the Teach First participants become outstanding because they get the right thing at the right time. Mm. And they can, uh, they don't always have the answers, but they ask and they ask questions, lots of questions. And they can argue their position on things in the schools, mm. most of them. And they can get, and they can influence change in school. Yeah. But they have group placements, don't they? No, they, they, they? They go into a school as a group. They do in their, they do in their... Um, when they get a placement, it's not the, uh, that's not the case. No. In the regional institute mm. in July, August, July, mm. they did go into school as a group. Yeah. Here, I went out. Yeah. I went in. I took them into a transition day, primary, mm. into a transition day at Hyde Bay, and they planned activities for um, nursery reception year one children, mm. and we had a shared experience. But when they go into school in September, they have their own class in their yeah. placement school. Yeah. And they're with, apart from little uh, blocks outside their class, they're with their yeah. class all the time. Yeah, okay, but, they, but there'll be three or four of them in a school? In a school Not school. necessarily. Okay. It works best when there are. Yeah. But uh, I've got one, I've got five at the moment. Um, two of them are in a school where there are two, year two, teach yeah, first participants. Right. I've got Another two in a school where there's one participant down in Folkestone from year one, from year, a year two with you. There's a year two participant with two year one. Mm -hmm. And the other one is on her own. And the one who's on her own is finding it most di difficult. She's sitting with somebody else mm -hmm. and they share a class. And she's not, the children are not looking to her as the teacher. She doesn't have the status. She doesn't. Yeah, the big thing is the status. I think the, the um, most significant thing recently is, is with PGC full-time students on the mm. Enhanced Studies yes. module, uh, PGC full-time programme, uh, where uh, it's built on an old model. When I, was at, when I was teaching at Chester College, I used to take my science specialist, which it's also based on my mm. MA, which was about putting specialist scientists with non-specialist yes. scientists. Um, but in the enhanced studies and in the year three um, research module, yeah. we take, just for a day, we take our students who have opted into the science, mm. they're not necessarily science specialists, but they've opted into the science, we take them into school for one day mm. because we find that there isn't a lot of good practice out there in schools, if I'm perfectly honest, and even if there is, it could be taught by somebody else. Students are often not encouraged to teach science in the way that I would that we would like them to teach science. So the thing that's been uh, most successful, I think, is them going in as a group, working on something they've planned, getting children to raise questions about a topic mm -hmm. and answering them. Mm -hmm. And that has informed something that I've done quite recently uh, through Teach First, where we've been making uh, two training videos with two Teach First participants from last year that's going to be used in um, training the year one participants this year nationally yeah. and, and the impact might be that it will Sorry. impact on 7,200 children, primary children nationwide. That's good and that's what you, what you need isn't it? That's I think ambition for the future, I'm coming to the, towards the end of my teaching career. Yeah. Um, I think my, my ambitions for the future are just to ensure that the ensure the best
science education training for Teach First mm. primary participants and early years participants because I'm now the national lead for primary science in the Teach First right. programme. And I hope that I give them the confidence and the insight mm. to develop science in their school and beyond because these people quite mm. often get into quite significant positions later. Yeah. Any ambitions beyond the teaching? I can't ever see me not teaching. Right. There's, there's going to be no retirement? I think not. I think right. not. I can't really... I, I love making teddy bears in my spare time, but right. I, I can't really see me making teddy bears forever. forever. <laughs> what things that change your thinking? Well, I suppose the things that changed my thinking were um, me being... Um, having difficulties in learning at primary yeah. and secondary. Mm. Um, the way that it was the way that things were taught. And um, at Chester College being first challenged as a student mm. to think and formulate my ideas based on what was being written at the time. Yeah. And um, putting theory into practice yeah. and having a, a really belief in my philosophy of science education right. and being yeah. given opportunities to, to do that. Right. Any specific book or, or report that, that influenced uh, your philosophy? I suppose the James report is quite right. significant. Right. Uh, it's not the one I'm familiar with. Well, 1982 right. maybe. I, I, I wouldn't say the Flowden report. Right. Um, it could be uh, 1978 the primary survey was it? Right. May well have influenced me. But the James report was talking about teacher training. Yes. Um, and I think that was significant. The reorganisation of teacher training. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think another another thing, well, last year I had a, a Teach First participant who was in absolutely dire straits. Mm -hmm. um, she was it, was, it was a very late placement. Um, she went into school in, in September and the, the whole thing was totally hostile. And she was obviously bright and enthusiastic and wanted to do things her way. Mm -hmm. She was put with a, a teacher who was responsible for the class, who, who was on um, performance related mm -hmm. care. Yeah. Um, wouldn't let my participant have any sort of success at all. Um, to cut a long story short, my participant was determined to stay because she wanted to be with her children and make a difference to her children. Mm -hmm. And we had to take her out eventually. Um, she, she was, the school, her original school said she was a failure virtually the whole way through. Mm -hmm. They agreed to let her through as a pass in, at the end of May. She went to her new school where she still is now and by the end of July she was an outstanding participant mm -hmm. and she's going on to be to do amazing things in her new school and I think that's probably a significant thing for me mm -hmm. but maybe you would say not. Well it's, it, it, it says a lot about the, the problem of a training model that is dependent on sitting next to, it used to be called sitting, sitting with Nelly. Sitting with Nelly, which comes from the mills. It uh, does, doesn't it? Have, have you ever tried to Google it? Because I, I have yeah, not made, yeah. I've never seen a, yeah. I've been trying recently to find. I think it's J.S.C. Brown, the psychology of industrial, the industrial psychology of old penguin book. I'll, I'll try, I'll dig it out. Uh, what failure did you learn most or least from? Well, my failure is that I haven't ever got to, the, to do a PhD. Right. And I've never capitalised on all the research that I've done myself. Yeah. And that's because it's been my own fault. I've had opportunities. Right. But my, um, and I haven't chosen not to do it, mm. it's just there hasn't been time. And I, I actually, I love working in schools with students, it's what I do best. Mm. Uh, I believe I can make a difference most when I'm with students in school. Although mm. I know that on Wednesday when the PGC students come back in, the early year students, my science group, they'll say, we did what you, you wanted us to do. I know a lot of them will, and they, they'll say it's been fantastic. 
Um, but I think um, that's my biggest failure. If I did it again, I probably mm. would do it just the same again. Yeah. I've, I've devoted my energy. Still plenty of time to do it anyway. Okay. <laughs> But my aim in coming to teacher education yeah. was to make science education better yeah. for children. Right. Um, for more children than I could ever teach myself. Because I knew that when I was teaching my science myself, like I'm doing now with students, mm. I know that's effective because they've always told me. Mm. And I've always been a popular teacher. Not because I made it fun, but because they learned from me. Mm. And I think um, I've been partially successful. I think you've been very modest. Thank you very much. It's a really pri a privilege to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's great.